Good day, everybody, and this is Mr. Ward coming to you live, actually recorded. I like to use screencasts like this every once in a while, um, so we're not reading everything. We, you know, we're going to focus in class, during class, on reading to produce writing. So we're going to read some nonfiction pieces for our writing projects, and I want to focus on that reading outside of class. So sometimes I'll do videos like this on some of the other things. In this case, uh, you're going to have three quick videos to watch on how to read nonfiction texts. Three things to look for, and we'll go over some other stuff too. But these are three basic things to look for to help you understand some of the complex texts that we're going to read in class. Or for homework, but for the class, we'll put it that way. So, in keeping with that, today we're going to go over kind of three things. Reading to produce writing. And in College Comp, what we're going to focus on is there's a conversation taking place about whatever the topic is. As writers, you're going to enter that conversation. All right, to do so, you need to understand what the conversation is, which is why these three things I'm going to have you look for will help you understand that. And again, we're going to look at other things as well. All right, but keep in mind, all academic writing is taking part in the conversation. What you have to say, it does matter. Whether it's, I think that this singer is better than that singer. It's a conversation. You enter it. The Eagles are the best football team in the NFL for the second straight year. It's a conversation. You might want to enter it. This major is better than that major. It's a conversation. You get the point. All right, move on. So... Again, these three first three videos here, how to better annotate nonfiction to make sense of what you're reading. You have to know what it's about to enter the conversation. And all academic writing, no matter what your major is, that is the gist of it. All right, first thing is, I just like to do this to make sure we all realize what nonfiction is, especially in the era of fake news, fake news. All right, sometimes I've had students think that nonfiction is true, and that's just not true. That's not true. All right. Nonfiction isn't always believable. It's not always credible. All right. So nonfiction is just a definition to keep in mind. It's a body of work that appears to tell us, the readers, about the real world, a real experience, a real person, an idea or belief. It appears to tell us. It's not telling you always facts. All right. It's not always true. It's not always factual. It's not always credible. And we're going to later this semester look at how you can determine whether something's credible or not. Think of it this way. Fiction, the writer invites the readers into the writer's imagined world. It's kind of made up. Nonfiction intrudes in our lives and claims, claims to tell us something about it. To Kill a Mockingbird, my favorite book. All right, it's fiction. It's realistic, but it is a made-up world. So most of the you know fictional books that you read in school, they're Fiction, because the writer made the world up. Nonfiction intrudes in our lives and claims to tell us something about it. You might want to pause it here and just kind of take this definition down just to remind yourself that, hey, it's not always true. They claim to tell us something about the world. Camden misses second run cut for Amazon headquarters. Philly and Newark are still in the running. It's a news story. It's nonfiction. It appears to tell us something about our world iPhones and Us, Time for Independent Study, Public Awareness and Regulation, the Editorial. It's an opinion piece, but it's about our world and claims to tell us something about it. Justin Bieber professes love for Selena on Instaspam. I'm sorry, Instagram. I call it Instaspam. Spam my timeline with this garbage. Anyway, appears to tell us something about the world in which we live. Six are suddenly being unbeatable teams. Appears to tell me something. Under the boardwalk, drilling into layers of ancient seafloor sea yields clues to global warming. It's about our world and it's going to appear to tell me something about it. The Declaration of Independence. Nonfiction. You get the point. All right, let me move on. All right, again, baking instructions. We get the point. All right. So if there's three questions to keep in mind. You want to write these down. This video, the rest of this will focus on the first one, and then I have like three-minute videos on the other two. So this is going to be your longest video. And I'm about to wrap it up. Give me about two and a half more minutes. What surprised me? What did the author think I already knew? What challenge, change, or confirm what I already know? 
Again, I'd probably pause this and just write these down, leave a little space under them because there'll be some other notes. Or maybe just want to write down what surprised me here. In any event. So what surprised me? It does not have to be a huge surprise. It's not a, oh my god, I just won $200 million. It might be, hey, there's a dollar on the ground. I can go buy a pretzel now. It's a nice little surprise. But it's something small. All right. These are four things. I would write these down too. Just keep in mind. These are four types of surprises you may come across. New information. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Suspicious information. Is that really true? Is it really true that Mr. Ward tried out for the Eagles? Now, that's highly suspicious because that is not true. But you guess you got to question these things. Clarifying information. <sighs> I get it now. And what we read in these in class, for class, about the topics to produce our writing for our, for our projects, they, you know, now you understand it, you can understand and enter the conversation. So we really have to make sure we understand some stuff what we read actually a different perspective I never thought of it that way how can anyone think that way so and again this is kind of what I was getting at it about 30 seconds ago what you think you know entering a topic as you read you might change your perspective that's good okay always have an open mind and I want you to do that as we read you know it might confirm what you already know it might change it though so look for that all right, let me get to an example. I'm almost done here. All right, this is, this is from a book called The Life and Times of the Honey Bee. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm not making that up. Right. Pilgrims brought the first honeybees to America. By the 1850s, honeybees had flown to California. Now, is there an earth-shattering surprise there? It depends on how you look at it. My surprise is this. So, there were no honeybees? in America before the pilgrims brought them here? And it took until the 1850s for them to get to California? Okay, that surprised me for sure. That's new information. Now I'm asking suspiciously, is that really true that they didn't get there until 1850? Alright, so you kind of see how this works. So it might make a little note in the side of, wow, the honeybees weren't around earlier? Alright, so we're just going to keep in mind, you know, new information, what surprised me. Uh, I have two more videos. And Wardy is out!